Hello everyone, uh, we are in Tokyo, Minami Aoyama, in our uh, flagship store. As you can see behind me, we have created a special theme for Valentine with the hot pinks and the reds. Uh, we have the uh, flower buds uh, with the different nuances of pink, dark red, and, and all of these uh, beautiful colors to uh, celebrate the month of Valentine. As Valentine is coming close, uh, in today's uh, video we're going to focus on uh, making a bouquet of flowers for uh, Valentine. Uh, as you can see here, I have uh, picked up a lot of uh, fresh flowers uh, that I'm going to uh, put into a bouquet. A lot of people think about Valentine as like red flowers. Uh, however, I like to uh, implement a lot of like um, hot pinks and uh, vivid pink and, and red colors together. So uh, that's what I'm going to focus on today and I'm going to go a little bit uh, in details about uh, what kind of preparation I'm thinking about before I get into uh, making a bouquet. So um, let's get started. I'm starting to do the preparation uh, of the bouquet um, and to do so I always first and foremost uh, decide uh, how big of a bouquet uh, do I want to make uh, because that determines how much greenery I should take off each flower. So let's say that I was going to make a 30 uh, centimeter in diameter bouquet. Um, as I'm taking off the green I would go approximately half of that so I would leave approximately 15 centimeter of green and it also determines where I start the bouquet also determines that. So as I am taking the leaves of the greenery off each flower I always think to myself okay if I'm making a 30 centimeter diameter bouquet I will then leave approximately 15 centimeter of green above where I hold and start the bouquet. So I will start to go in now and uh, take leaves and small uh, side branches off each and every flower uh, and go through everything before uh, I get started. I have three types of tools that I use, uh, two types of scissors and uh, one knife. And I will now show you how I use uh, each tool. So for instance, the Astrolantia uh, flower here, um, these side um, branches here, I will take the smaller scissors and cut off like that. When you do a bouquet, preparation is everything. So it's very important that everything is done perfectly. As you get started, you're using both your hands and will not be able to let go. The next one here, uh, I'm not using any tools. I'm just putting my hand up and taking um, each of the greenery off. So how do I determine uh, when to use tools or not? Uh, it's a lot, I guess, with experience. Uh, I know from each flower um, of which it's the, the, the leaves fall off easily or not. Um, these ones here can break easily, therefore I use the scissors. Uh, with the trifolium, the leaves go off very easily and therefore I use my hands. The same with the hypericum, for instance. I go through each and every one and I take off um, the leaves like that. I always make sure that I don't leave anything here on the stem because everything, particularly on the bottom part, everything thereafter would go into the water could create um, a bacteria in the water. So therefore, I'm very careful with cleaning up the flowers to make sure that uh, nothing is left, uh, particularly on the bottom. And the beautiful ranunculus, there's a lot of um, small buds to take off. Again, you could do like this again, but often leaves you with small like strings of, of greenery. So I uh, prefer again to, I usually take the leaves off with my hand and I cut the, um, the small buds off with uh, my uh, small scissors. So I really um, want to focus on having perfect flowers. So therefore I take off quite a lot of uh, leaves. I actually basically only leave the top uh, part on when I do uh, the Bovaria flowers. So lots of greenery off here um, as we go and prepare for that. Um, as for uh, the color lilies, there is uh, not much to do. Uh, they are already uh, as is. There's two types of uh, ranunculus, uh, the beautiful pink ones and very dark red. Uh, particularly for the red one, notice that the middle is really cool with this tint of like bright green. 
um, in the very middle. Red unculus, I always take everything off because I feel they get very quickly like a bit yellow. So um, I take everything off here and make sure that the stems are uh, nice uh, and clean to avoid any yellow leaves too early on in the process um, of the bouquet. Um, we have the uh, clematis. The clematis, a lot of the beautiful flowers from the bottom is going off. So I carefully here take off all, like longer buds for sure here I will use um, again. I also take like a little bit of extra leaves off on the, the clematis. This is really to sort of add a second layer, which I will explain you shortly. Uh, I want these small, like delicate flowers to sort of go on top of the um, entire bouquet. Next, we go into the uh, acacia, um, which has this beautiful sort of tinted ends. Here again, um, there will be a few um, side branches that needs to be taken off, but I'm trying to leave these ones as sort of bushy um, as possible because they are giving a nice support to uh, the bouquet as I'm creating it. So these small side branches, as long as they are from where I'm holding the bouquet, not going to interfere with this point uh, where I'm holding the bouquet, I'm trying to leave as much as possible to create volume in between each flower. So as you can see, when I'm going through uh, each of the different um, flowers, there's a lot of work uh, to be done uh, before you can start making the bouquet. And also think about that now the flowers are here in our flagship store in my studio, but before that they have been purchased. I have uh, been to the flower market, we picked them up, and I have chosen out of many different flowers which one to put in this specific bouquet. So there's a lot of thought, a lot of preparation going in to each and every uh, item that I make. So now we're almost there. I am ready to um, get started um, on the bouquet. Uh, all the preparation is done, so um, let's get going. As I get started uh, making the bouquet, I always uh, choose first two flowers to get started with. And how I determine which flowers they are is usually depending on uh, the thickness and the strength uh, of the stem. So for instance, I will take this quite strong, um, one of the bigger heads, um, ranunculus, um, together with, for instance, the hypericum. Both very strong uh, in the stem and very good start point. So as I'm getting started, I am focusing on putting a lot of uh, greenery uh, in the bouquet. And as you can see, uh, the point here, as I am holding on um, to the bouquet, I am never holding on to any green. So um, if you um, focus here uh, on my hand, as you can see, I would never, for instance, hold on to green like this. Uh, I would always have the flower tall enough to only hold on to the stem. So never push or hold on to any greenery that could interfere with the point that the bouquet is getting built out from. So little by little here, I'm adding um, the flowers. Of course, always going in the same direction uh, in a spiral. Another interesting point that's worth focusing on is when I get started with the bouquet, you can see it's a little bit tense. I'm having everything uh, on the tip of my uh, fingers and as the bouquet gets bigger and bigger, it will slowly sort of move like this into my hand and eventually it will have this uh, view more than sort of as I'm holding on uh, with the tip of my fingers. Um, I often support a little bit with the uh, bottom fingers here uh, just to keep it a bit together uh, in the beginning. But I would like to say that I think um, it can also be a even a bad habit to push too much with your fingers here. So I actually uh, prefer to keep like a more like an open hand than more sort of close and tight. Um, as you can see here, as I'm um, slowly building up uh, the bouquet, I'm trying to keep not exactly the, the same uh, height for each and all the flowers. I'm trying to sort of create a little bit um, different uh, heights and um, 
sort of each and the uh, each of the flowers has like a different feel as I explained before the, the clematis I'm trying to as you can see as I put it in here um, same here and same over here you have those flowers coming up a little bit taller uh, than anything else so I'm trying to constantly make a little bit of variation uh, in height for each of the flowers as I uh, put them in okay what I think is quite interesting uh, and what it does to this bouquet is that it's creating a very beautiful contrast. It's giving this a little bit of, uh, of uh, sort of off-white, creamy white uh, touch in between the flowers, which actually gives a very nice contrast and makes some of the other colors stand out even more because I'm using that uh, in between. Sometimes if you use too many of the same color, um, the bouquet can become a little bit boring. So contrast, is something that I focus on a lot. Um, in this case, uh, definitely the mix between the more darker and the lighter colors. Since I have um, a lot of uh, softer flowers, softer stems um, in the bouquet. I will probably do maybe the string. I would give it one more rotation that I normally do, then put a little bit less tension on the string. Um, in that way, I will sort of make sure that I don't squeeze or break uh, any of the uh, thin uh, stems. As you can see for this uh, spiral here, um, you can really see, when you look at the bottom here, you can see how many uh, stems. I think we at least uh, way over uh, 100 stems of flowers here for this um, beautiful uh, Valentine's uh, bouquet. So we are all done with this uh, bouquet here. I hope that you have uh, enjoyed the different uh, points that I focused on in this video and um, I wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day. Thank you for watching. <laughs>